Hi, my name is Jess Beers and I'm the founder of White Lotus Transformation in Tamarindo, Costa Rica. And I want to walk you through how to set up a bike. So for the most efficiency, you're going to set your bike up in this order. Starting with the height and of things and then going to the fore and aft position. So we start with this seat height and then the fore and aft position. Because if you start with the fore and aft position, then you have to go back and redo it again because it's relative to the seat height. So starting with seat height, we're gonna start with the hip bone height. So the hip bones in the front, not the side. You're gonna find your pelvic bones and line the top of the seat up with the pelvic bones. So you're gonna pull out your lever with one hand, slide the seat up and down. So for me, I'm gonna go a little higher, right about here, okay? Then push the lever in, your seat height is set. I like to start at the zero position, some people do elbow to fingertip, that does not work on stages bikes. So I start in the zero position and then see what it's like when I get on the bike. Next height that you're going to be working with is your handlebar height. You're gonna have your handlebars a little bit higher if you have any kind of back pain, if you're pregnant, anything that's going on in the back, you wanna be at a higher angle. If you are pretty healthy in your back and you're got a nice strong core, you can support yourself at a lower angle, you can drop your handlebars in line with this seat or they can be higher. You never wanna go lower because that can put some pressure on the back. So right now my handlebars are good. They're a little bit higher than the seat height. The fore and aft position of your handlebars, I'm gonna zero that out as well. So there's a zero line on these stages bikes. You twist to loosen and then you can slide in and out for both the seat and the handlebar. So to get on, I'm gonna step into my pedal and then into the other pedal. Okay, now these are called toe cages. On the other side, you're gonna have a clip. And this is an SPD clip. And this is gonna fit your, your biking shoes. Now, after you've done a couple classes, it's really nice to, to get these kind of shoes because the sole will prevent your foot from bending. So it's really, really hard. It also clips in and all the power from your legs goes directly into the pedal instead of going through the foot and potentially causing problems in your feet. Okay, so once you're in the, on the bike and you've clipped yourself in or you're in your toe cages, you're gonna pull the strap to, to tighten on both sides. And then to test that fore and aft position is the same mechanics as a squat. I don't want my knees to pass my toes. So as long as I'm sitting and I'm even, I'm not leaning one side to the other because that will lengthen the leg that I'm leaning on towards, I'm pedaling around. Now I push my little stop button and I come so that my crankshaft is parallel to the floor. That's what connects the pedal to the bike. And the tip of my knee should line up right with the ball of my foot or the pedal, okay? And then if it's too far forward, I just need to slide the seat back a little. If I'm way back here and the knee is behind, like over the ankle, I wanna come forward a little bit. So this is set up really well for me in the zero point. Zero point is kind of like a natural or average anatomical position. Um, and then also here, you can slide this forward or back depending on your comfort level. So you wanna have a couple different spinal positions. You can tuck and round or you can lift up, okay? And alternating is a really good idea between these two positions. Okay, so your bike is all set up. You're ready to start class. What happens next? You wanna have your hands in a couple different positions and your body in a couple different positions. And we're gonna go over those right now. So the first hand position is position number one. My knuckles are facing forward. The heel of the palm is on the handlebars. This is the closest position. What you wanna watch here is that you're not bending your elbow, your wrists back so that you get this like crease right here. So nice straight wrists. If you spend an entire class like this, you're gonna get off, <laughs> your wrists are gonna be stuck like that. <laughs> Forever, <laughs> no. All right, so second position, we're going out to the side. Knuckles go out, okay? And then third position is an extended position, usually standing, um, extended out, also knuckles are out. Low bar is included in the stages bike and that's below and that's your fourth position. So the body changes position from seated to a seated rounded position. This is used for sprinting to generate power from the core. And then standing in a neutral spine and then more of in a tuck position to generate power again for hills or speed work out of the saddle. When you're in this low bar position, 
there's a little bit of a tuck and again, you're generating that power, the core is engaged. The only time you're really extending the back is for a break up here in this first hand position. It's like a high knee run. But when we're working, we're in the core. So we teach a rhythm-based cycle class here at White Lotus. And the music really helps to get you motivated. But if you can get on the beat, it'll keep you at a consistent pace and allow you to work a little harder. So I'm gonna explain this. First, we're gonna find a hill. And then we're gonna stand up. Listen to the music. We hear that beat. One, two, one, two, one, two. Each beat is one step. And we have a little cheat here. Since we have technology, 53 RPM. That's what the beat of this is. Now, the magic happens when you maintain the beats and you add resistance. Because usually when you add resistance, it'll slow you down. But because we're on the beat, we're gonna work even harder. So turn it up, turn it up some more. Don't let it slow you down, keep it on the beat. One, two, one, two. And it feels good too. And there it is. So a push-up on the bike is nothing like a push-up on a mat. You're going to take the hands in, get on the beat, start with the feet, and then just find a little bounce that matches the legs. You'll notice when my lead leg is straightening, that's when I bounce down. And then we keep the same movement going. Elbows go out to the side. Every time that leg straightens, I bend my elbows and drop. And then hands go forward, drop the elbows in. And then we go back, elbows out. Super simple, don't overthink it. Find your rhythm and the rest will come. We got one more thing to go over and that is the tap back. Super fun, dancey move. So we get up, nice quick tempo. Now watch my legs, nothing changes from the lower body. All we do is shift it back, it's back. And up. Back. Now these are slower tap backs. We go back, up, back, back. Good. Legs stay on that tempo. Feels like you're dancing on the bike. Hey, my name is Jess Beers, and if you like this video, please reach out. All of my information is in the description box below, and you can reach me at whitelotustransformation.com as well.